Hello and welcome to this golden nugget. Uh, today I'm going to be talking to you about the one of the chapters from my PhD. My name is Kevin Campbell Carr. I'm a director of the Society of Sports Therapists and also a member of the Society of Sports Therapists. I lecture in sports therapy at Buxton University and I'm also still a practicing sports therapist. Today we're going to be talking about the patellofemoral joint, one of the second most commonly uh, common uh, complaints of pain within the population throughout the world, the most painful area being the lower back. So what I'm going to talk to you about is to try to understand what people are doing and why they're assessing it in a certain way. And hopefully what, what will happen is you will listen to this information and say, that is something I'm doing. Is there something else I should, could or would be doing? And of course, if you enjoy this and you click like, you um, uh, comment, anything else, then please do so because that will give me the idea of whether we need to keep doing more of these. So starting with the patellofemoral joint, we're just going to take a look here and we need to understand, so this being a right knee, as you well know, here being the patella sitting in the trochlear groove. With the leg in an extended position, it sits in the trochlear groove but it is relatively unstable. Uh, so it sits just above and just slightly outside in an extended position, making it quite unstable and able to move around. Obviously, any form of muscular contraction from above will uh, help to fix the patellofemoral joint. And we also have the um, lateral and medial uh, patellofemoral ligaments that also help to locate it. Once we flex the knee, it drops into the trochlear groove, makes it extremely stable and therefore much less likely to um, want to um, track laterally or medially. So tracking we're referring to in motion and alignment we refer to as in a static position. So once the patellofemoral joint becomes um, uh, problematic we need to consider well why is that and typically what we're looking for is pain. Pain located on the underside of the patella um, and your patients will quite often say it's in there so deep down in there and from looking at it as a a patellofemoral alignment position, um, McConnell in 1984 highlighted the idea that we could look at the, pat the patella, if we look at the medial and lateral borders of the patella, and then the medial and lateral epicondyle and see whether it is positioned, whether this central point is positioned between the centres of here. Theorising or kind of coming up with the idea that that might be that the two centres should align with one another, meaning it's in the middle. Um, something that I then developed was a caliper to try and measure that objectively and that's part of the rest of my PhD which we can come to on another session. But today what we're going to look at is so how do people then assess that and do people use this McConnell technique still um, in, the, in the current day. So I conducted a questionnaire and the results of the questionnaire were quite interesting. So I asked physiotherapists and sports therapists and um, I had uh, over 100 participants, and I found that just, just under half, so 42% of the practitioners still use the McConnell method for assessing patellofemoral joint position in what's considered to be a pathologic PFJ. Why is that important? Well, it means it's less than, less than half, so there are a good proportion of people that are not using this, they're not considering this, but 42% is still quite a high number. From that, I also asked then questions about whether onward referral was something that, 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 um, that the practitioners would do. And it was a common, very common um, theme that because 70% said that they would refer on um, if they were highlighting someone with what they considered to be uh, any form of patellofemoral malalignment. However, there was a relatively low rate of imaging being common practice. Now, that leads us to kind of ask the question of, well, if McConnell's technique is not being used, we're not looking at where is this sitting in position relative at the front of the knee, um, we're not sending people on for um, scans, so to get images of what's actually happening underneath the skin, then what is it that people are assessing with? I did ask those questions. There were a variety of things that people were assessing, many of them very appropriate. And of course, as is becoming more and more common now, we look more towards functional assessments. And there were quite a few answers in and around those functional type assessments, um, such as um, uh, 
you know, trend dunnerberg test, all those sorts of functional outcomes, to see whether there are tissues that are pulling on the patellofemoral femoral joint. So it could be that we are malaligning or maltracking through motion due to incorrect pulls on the patella, or also then incorrect positioning of femur or incorrect positioning of the tibia. So we have to think of it in that um, three component parts to that to the knee joint. What's what does this really tell us though if we're looking at this low rate of imaging? Well for me what, what I wanted to consider there is that referring for imaging um, is there to seek for more information about the patellofemoral joint morphology. When we're looking at morphology, we're looking to understand the bone shape and what impact that is having on uh, the patient. So if we're not sending for imaging, we're not getting a true representation of what's happening underneath the levels. And in particular, what we're thinking here is, are there any pathological issues, um, with, such as trochlear dysplasia, uh, whereby the, the groove may not be very grooved and may in fact be particularly flat, or the shape and type of patella shape, because a groove, a, a, a V shape of the patella will sit in that groove and should therefore track nice and central. But if that was completely flat and you had a flat patella, it's essentially going to be like an ice cube on a mirror. It's just going to slide side to side as well as moving up and down. That therefore makes the joint much less stable and therefore is going to be more likely to cause injury. That injury could move on and lead to things such as subluxations and dislocations. Very bad. So what we can see is that the McConnell technique is fairly common um, in application via our therapists in patellofemoral pain. But what I wanted to look at next was, do we need to understand and establish validity and reliability in clinically um, derived data. So were there ways that we could measure and find clinical data that could give us a more judicious use of imaging modalities? And by that I mean cost effective ultimately, because if we can take our patients and look at them and highlight that there is something particularly wrong, get some sort of level of data that we could say, well, we have those answers now, Therefore, should I send my patient off for imaging because it may be able to give me greater depth of understanding of what I need to do and how I need to deal with this patient. And so that's where the chapters went on to from there. I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope it's kind of raised a few questions for you. Maybe it's also made you think about what it is that you're currently doing. And if you'd like to hear more, then please um, click like, add some comments, you know, subscribe, all those sorts of things. And hopefully I look forward to giving you the next chapter fairly soon. Thanks very much. Enjoy your day.